All right, we've got another expert stack for you guys today. And our topic is breath work. And when I say stacked, I mean stacked. We've got Anahata Ananda, Nikolai Engelbrecht, Naraj Naik, and Travis Steffen. So let me tell you a little bit about each of them. Anahata Ananda is absolutely amazing. You may have seen her on my Instagram if you follow me there recently um, before I brought a retreat to her studio called Shine Sedona in Sedona to do breath work. Um, she's been trained in many shamanic traditions. She's been doing healing work for a very long time and she's also a high performance coach and she's just absolutely incredible. Um, so she, her, her shamangelic breath work, signature breath work at Shine is just I mean, it is just at another level. It's so powerful what my group that I brought there experienced. So grateful for her. And she's such an incredible teacher. So we're going to kick off the episode with her. Um, you can check out that entire episode if you would like by clicking the link in the show notes. Um, and then our next guest is Nikolai Engelbright, my friend from out in Iceland. Um, he is just an absolute expert breathwork facilitator, works with, you know, very high level private <laughs> clientele. I won't say more than that. Um, just has an incredible story. He has a book called, I think it's Gangsters and Gurus. He's gonna, sorry, I, I have the book. What is it called, Gangsters and Gurus? Yeah, Gangsters and Gurus. He has the most insanely crazy story his wife his life is like a movie <laughs> um and yeah he's just the breath work is his his thing he's very good at it so we're gonna hear from him and then we're gonna hear from naraj naik um so he's the founder of soma breath and um yeah i mean he's just so amazing he's, he's affecting millions of lives he's an author with mind valley he's a big time speaker um i've seen him at many events he's absolutely incredible so we're going to hear from him and then we will hear from travis steffens travis is a conscious capitalist who had a real estate company that was doing quite well that he actually um brought in and like rehabilitated homeless people in his company and through that rehabilitation process uh, to have them be employees, he was using Breathwork a lot because he's a huge fan. And so he created this app for them, which he ultimately ended up making public. And that is now the Breath Source app. And it's just like, has so many of the top breathwork people in the world. It's so incredible. And um, we're gonna, breathwork is just such an important part of his journey and, and helping others heal as well. So we're gonna hear from him last. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here is our breathwork expert stack. For me, breathwork has been, in terms of what I think people are seeking, like like getting these old patterns that they know are just kind of like stuck in their body or their energy energy body, they know it and they like they can see it and they can feel it, but they don't know how to get it out. Like for me, it's just like <laughs> breath work just helps me release from it feels like from a body sense. Like I'm just different. Like I, I'm like, I get it now. I yeah. get it now, which has been a lot of my psychedelic journeys have, I've had moments like that, but in terms of legal issues, uh, you know, in terms of issues happening, problems happening, yeah. mental health stuff and it's real. medications people are in and all these, you know, traumas and they're in this like really highly uncomfortable state and they don't know how to get out of it. Whereas breath work, you can just stop doing the breath work and just chill for a minute and cry or whatever. You don't even have to start back up if you don't want to. So, um, I love it. And I'm, and that's why I'm like, breath work will never not be part of my retreats now. And I'm like, so excited that they get to <laughs> come do it for, with you this year because you've been doing it so long and you're so good at what you do. And so for yeah. the sake of the podcast, I'm wondering if you can share, you know, um, probably people listening might range from maybe they're a breathwork facilitator or all the way to somebody that, that's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Or they might have maybe tried like yeah. one technique for like a minute, yeah. you know what I mean? But can you talk about breathwork and what it is yeah. and what it can do? Yeah. Um, you know, first of all, breath is life force. So when we have a trauma or a betrayal or, uh, you know, something that takes our breath away, it can get stuck in the visceral tissues, mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the body. We can have cellular memory of a breakup, of betrayal, of a trauma, physical, sexual abuse, um, or just feeling like I don't fit in and I'm not enough or I'm not good enough. It doesn't have to be 
a physical, sexual, or energetic trauma, it can just be externalizing the judgment and criticism of other people or society or just com the comparison-itis of I'm not blank enough or I'm too blank. Right. And that can contract our energy field or my voice isn't safe or my truth is not welcome or my emotional uh, expression is making other people feel comfortable. There's a whole lot of reasons from little to big to this isn't that little when it's just once, but it sure turns out to be a big thing when I have this happen a hundred times. Mm -hmm. um, and so we all have these different contractions or distortions, mm -hmm. blocks, inadequacies, limiting beliefs, um, heartbreak, unworthiness. Like we, we all have these different things in our energy field. Some of them are somatically held in our physical tissues, like the weight of our relatives and their expectations on our shoulders, as an example, um, or different traumas that are held in the body. But it's also held in the emotions. Watery emotions tend to be more like grief and sadness that maybe haven't had a safe, healthy, loving outlet for. Or when there is something that is dissonant or hurtful or painful and we don't feel safe and it doesn't feel right, it's not uncommon to feel anger, which turns to resentment, but then turns to rage when it's not dealt with. And when you're oppressing those things or that energy is locked in the body, really common for a codependent relationships as well as health problems in addition to addiction issues, whether that's workaholic or eating disorders, all of these different things are a correlation of some kind of dissonance, mm -hmm. some kind of dissonance. And for whatever reason, I, I love the opportunity to hold space and be the explorer to say, how can I help you uncover the dissonance? How can I help you realign that dissonance and I found one of the most efficient, efficient tools for that discovery and realignment, that release, and then the reclamation, the reclamation, or the remembering, or the retrieval of the authentic, true self, yeah. can come through breathing exercises. And I don't mean like the yoga breathing that just helps us to maybe relax mm -hmm. or calm the mind or energize yeah or energize uh different types of things well this is more what i call shamanjelic yeah. breath work where the breath is designed it's a pretty quick deep pace and it's designed to be that spark where that density that's held in the tissues or in the emotions or in the energy body or in the subconscious brain, as you start breathing intensely and oxygenating these parts of your body, these things start to rise. And if there is a safe space and a skilled practitioner, because not all practitioners are skilled. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I do the training is to put skilled practitioners out there into the world so that they are trauma informed of how to move into somebody's energy field and support them through that process of release or grief or rage or sadness um, or insecurity or unworthiness and how to move in with incredible integrity, immense compassion and a level of range that allows you to tailor the breathwork experience and the support if one person might need to cry it out and somebody else is finally free from a relationship they're letting go of or they're reclaiming a part of their um, sexual sovereignty that got distorted in some experiences or experiences or they find their voice again to be able to have the range and the depth and the care and the presence to tailor the journey. Well, one of my favorite releases, it was like one of my favorite releases <laughs> I've ever been like the recipient, that, like I felt so lucky to, you know, be in that space. But it was like one of our um, participants, she has a very demanding, very demanding work life. Like it's a lot of serious business, you know. She's moving, you know, big pawns all the time. Like it's a lot, a lot of pressure. Intensity. And she laughed. She had the <laughs> most 
contagious laugh. We could, none of us could stop laughing with her. And it was so beautiful to see that. And then we had a woman in grief and she just let out the biggest belly deep from her belly sobs. And it just made me cry, you know, like, and it was so, it's so beautiful. And, And that's another thing is like, I think sometimes You know, it's like when you first go to yoga and they're like, take a deep breath and you like, don't want anyone to hear you breathing. You're like, (laughs) you know, and I think like sometimes people can have fear of that. But I think that's why breath work is so beautiful because I mean, sure, you could still have the fear and like maybe work your way into it. But for the most part, like you're not really like totally running the show with so much control as usual. Like you're in this space where you're just like. I need to do what I need to do. And it's so freeing and rage for women. I'm like, I'm going to send every woman here because it's really hard to access like anger and rage for a lot of women. And they do exactly that survival mechanism of, well, you know, like, you know, he's not perfect. He wasn't, you know, he had a, he, he, I I forgive him. And like, you can tell when that hasn't. And what that is doing is just being the people pleaser in the economy accommodator at the expense of self. Yeah. And that there's a cost to that. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that we can't honor, okay, that's the best they could do, or they did make a mistake and they said they were so oh, that is all may be true, but my feelings about it yeah. are also true and mm-hmm. also matter. Mm-hmm. And your grief matters. Yeah. Like we're such a culture that is like, get over it already. And that doesn't really honor grief or just Oh, it's breakup. Just get, right. Hey, hop on the next dating app, swipe right. and let's go. And doesn't allow us to be present with our emotions, which are very intelligent. You know, as a human, exactly. we're like sadness means you're experiencing life and loss mm-hmm. happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Things we want to go this way went this way. Things we want to go longer are cut short. We have the right to have a feeling about mm-hmm. it. And when things are pulled from us when it doesn't feel right, when we got betrayed, when somebody, like the situation isn't what we thought it was, and we have the right to be angry as well. And in breath work, it's a safer place for that anger than in your relationship unchecked after a few drinks. Because then I guarantee that rage, that anger is going to start to come out and be aggressive yeah. or it's going to be internalized and then we've got a cancer situation. Yeah. And so this is about letting that release valve, valve out. And sometimes what we need is just when we're so serious, sometimes we just need our inner child yeah. to play and have some fun. Yeah. Sometimes we've been trapped in these kind of um, oppressive relationships or jobs that maybe we didn't choose from a place of empowered or it used to fit, but it doesn't fit us anymore, or we're choosing it to not disappoint someone else. Mm -hmm. And so we can feel kind of trapped and resentful in that. And sometimes in breath, we're seeing the most like, yippee, (laughs) freedom. Oh, finally, I can choose my happiness Mm -hmm. over this unhealthy, shitty career. (laughs) And it's like, yes, you can. And there's plenty of life left (laughs) to start a new chapter. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of life left to reset and unchoose something that isn't in alignment that maybe was, or you didn't know that it wasn't until you figured out, okay, maybe I think this isn't safe or it isn't healthy, or I'm just over it. Mm -hmm. I think it's coming to completion. Mm -hmm. Then there is this epiphany and wake up call. And what I think I, I, one of my favorite things that happens in breath work is not only all this release, but radical clarity. Yeah. Well, if that's not it, what are you putting in its place and where are you going next? Yeah. I think radical clarity and soul insight, because now all the brain isn't clogged with all these limiting beliefs Mm -hmm. and you've taken the emotional trash out. Mm. So now there's all this space, space. to create, exactly. to allow inspiration, which, which is just to, to let spirit in. Inspiration in spiritos mm-hmm. means, can I make space for spirit to help guide me, whether that's your intuition or your soul or mm-hmm. your great grandma that's on the other side or your divine counsel or Jesus or whoever, there can be this openness now to access divine guidance or a higher power or higher consciousness, or as you like to say, right? Your soul, Mm -hmm. your soul wisdom and that soul connection. 
because then that can start guiding you instead of everybody else exactly. or fears, doubts, limitations guiding you. And I just feel that on the journey of transformation, that is a game changer. And like you, when you get back into the driver's seat of your own life again. All right. There is our excerpt from Anahata Ananda. If you'd like to hear that full episode, that's episode 214. It's called Breathwork and the Roadmap to Transformation. And the link to it is in the show notes. Now we are going to transition over to Nikolai Engelbrecht and hear some awesomeness from him. There is no other energy source that is more vital than the breath, of course. So when we look at it from that perspective, it is like, it is what is keeping us alive as human beings. Right. Usually we speak about food, we speak about exercise, we speak about mindset, we speak about all of these other things, but then the most important source is not even mentioned. Like if you look at yeah. most like whatever, like a pyramid of happiness or whatever, yeah, there's nothing about the breath there. But the way mm -hmm. I work with the breath personally is is a combination, of course, depending on the client and depending on what they need. I do a lot of addiction programs with people who have like very heavy and severe addictions with Xanax and all of this kind of. Mm -hmm. popular let's call them popular drugs these days mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so what we can see is like after just 30 days of practicing different breathing techniques that client will stop like they'll literally temper out of like heavy medication that they have been on for for years like for 10 years 15 wow. years of their life and they can temper out within like 30 to to 60 days of course with the help of of other people like uh uh, nutritionist and stuff like that it's like of course everything has to be together yeah but the breath is kind of like a gateway where we can go beyond the mind so a lot of the time we just look at the mind of like what did you feel when you were 15 which is also good it's also an important yeah. part of a process but it's not the only part so there is also the somatic experience of mm -hmm. where trauma is stored in the body how do you get access to that trauma and that is what we can do directly through the breath like bypassing the mind going straight into the trauma and then on an even, mm -hmm. I would say, like more advanced level, we can go into the same kind of experiences that we go into with DMT, that we go into yeah. with ayahuasca, like we can go into a mind altering state and deeper yeah. states of meditations, of course, but it does require more than like DMT is like five minutes, you're straight in, you're straight out. Most people mm -hmm. have no idea what they actually experience. They're just like, oh my God, this is really intense. And right. uh, with the breath work, it might take you five days it might take you five years yeah so yeah when you, go, when you know what you're going into you're like oh okay this is the space I know a lot of people when I tell them about my breathwork experiences they're like I'm telling them how I'm breathing I'm kind of exemplifying it and they're like I don't think I could do that for an hour can you speak on that because I'm like I know I didn't think I was going to be able to either <laughs> can you speak on that have you ever seen anybody like not be able to do it no okay <laughs> I've had some people where they were really, uh, where they had like really severe lung disease, where it was too, like where it could be too intense. So they could only do like a slower and meet, like they wouldn't be like, yeah, they wouldn't be able to do that for a long time, but only because of like a, a fitness, uh, you could say like a physical kind of um, a specific specimen. issue. Right. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. But, uh, I think once you go into it, you kind of lose also the concept of time. And you lose the concept of like, how long are you actually doing it for? At least if it's guided in the right way, you sh should just be kind of in a trance state, which we always have been able to go into as human beings. A lot of people have forgotten it in our comfy lifestyle with Uber Eat and with all these different <laughs> things yeah. that they thought about. We used to always go into these kind of um, yeah. things, right? So I, I have never really experienced um people who couldn't do it i have seen people who weren't willing to go into the sadness so like the second the sadness or the anger came they would stop of course mm -hmm. i've met those people that it's just like no not ready which is fine and it's fair enough to do that also if you ever are in a breathwork session and you feel like okay this is too much because of course you shouldn't necessarily force yourself if you don't feel safe yeah yeah but, um but now i mean i have taken I have taken thousands of people through through breathwork courses, right? And like from everything, from CEOs to uh, big dudes with tattoos in the face inside prisons to like anyone, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so beautiful to see that once you go through the sessions, everyone usually comes out with the same feeling afterwards, which is like a deeper sense of peace, yeah. deeper sense of calmness, um, nervous system that feels more balanced. 
Yeah. And once people have experienced that, that is, at least for most people, that is more addictive than any kind of substance that you could take for it. Yeah, I'll like, take, I'll any, take a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll take nervous system regulation and coherence and being comfortable with feeling my emotions and tapped into the universe over Xanax any day. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> All right. That wraps up our excerpt from Nikolai Engelbrecht. That's episode 156. It's called healthy masculine, the ego and more with spiritual advisor. If you'd like to listen to that entire episode, you can hit the link in the show notes. And now we will move into our excerpt from Naraj Naik. For me, with my experience and breath, now I haven't done your technique, which I definitely want to. I'm very excited to try it. But just from holotropic breath workshops that I've gone to, or when I was at Rhythmia doing ayahuasca, um, Christian Minson there taught, uh, he calls it transformational breath work. So I've done some different types of breath work. And there is something wildly emotionally healing about breath work. It's, um, for me, it's, it's like a roadblock remover. So I've had many plant medicine journeys, many psychedelic journeys. Um, those are also roadblock removers. They open you up, but there's something I noticed so specifically about the breath that it's like the things that I don't want to deal with these like little emotional things that I'm not seeing. I just get taught immediately. This is the stuff that you're not seeing. This is what you, this is where these are your blind spots. That's what I feel like happens mm-hmm. to me. And once I see them, it's kind of like a monster in the closet thing. Like you're a little kid and you see this monster in the closet and you flip the light on and it's just like your hockey stick and your jacket or whatever. Like that, <laughs> that's what breath work feels like to me when I process things. It's like, oh, oh, it's just a hockey stick. Got it. You know, it's just this mm-hmm. wildly healing thing. And I usually cry. I usually ball. I, I mean, I always do. <laughs> I ball my <laughs> eyes out. It's just wildly healing. And, um, for me, I feel that space of healing. I feel that space. I mean, like, I mean, I'm on level 10 billion afterwards. I am just like, I get it. I see it. Wow. I feel so centered and grounded. And so I just wanted to hear a little bit more about your process, what you're doing with people. I know that you're doing the music, um, but you're doing events. Can you talk a little bit more about what exactly you do, how you're integrating the pranayama? Like, what does this look like? And then, you know, yeah, yeah. how people can find you. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Great question. So, so there is all these different types of breath work. Like, so breath work is like an umbrella word for various different styles, but originally it was more known for holotropic rebirthing. That's, that's kind of what made the name of breath work, but uh-huh. you know, now it's kind of like, um, like pranayama is called is class on the breath work and you know, even sometimes Qigong is and things like that. So First, you've got to make a distinction from, from those different styles. So basically, mm-hmm. Holotropic uh, was made by Stan, Stanislav Grof because mm-hmm. uh, he was trying to find an alternative to um, LSD because yep. he was one of the first psychotherapists who used LSD and he, mm-hmm. then he got banned and he wanted a replacement. And he found that this, this kind of breathing, uh, like, you know, intense breathing, kind of it, it creates hallucinogenic effects in people, mm-hmm. which was also therapeutic. It kind of had a, a multifaceted effect. So he started using that and wrote lots of books about it and all that. Mm-hmm. And then rebirthing kind of, kind of came out about the same time. Same kind of, it's pretty much the same technique, uh, but he put a different twist on it. He said he got it from an immortal Babaji, Leonard Orr, uh, called Babaji, an immortal yogi called Babaji, who lives mm. for thousands of years, mm. who gave him this um, technique, wow. and it's a technique of immortality. Huge great claims, but um, yeah. but still, it, it, it's got a lot of um, people using it. You know, it's, a, yeah. it's very popular. And it, it obviously works and, and helps for what it's intended for, Definitely. which is like a psychotherapeutic tool. Right. Um, and it kind of helps release emotional traumas and stress. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so pranayama is different. Pranayama is more like a library of different techniques. So with pranayama, it's more like it's like a pharmacy of different techniques. You know, so you've got stuff for, and each one actually taps into the autonomic nervous system. So you either lowering blood pressure, heart rate, or you can speed up blood pressure. I mean, speed up heart rate, raise blood pressure. You can hmm. increase your body temperature. You can cool your body down. You can increase oxygen supply to the muscles, you know, you can uh, get into all the states of consciousness. You know? So there's different types of techniques for different uses. Interesting. You know, even ones that flush the lymphatic system, help you ah. drain. And this is just through so, 
through different breeding techniques you can yeah different breeding process. techniques and a few different like okay. ways of using energy locks you know uh, certain mm -hmm. asana like postures you'd mm -hmm. use it mm -hmm. enhances the whole thing because mm -hmm. yoga and pranayama really they they go pranayama is a branch of yoga so yeah. they go it goes together it shouldn't be separate in pranayama actually what you can do is you can slow the breathing so they they have techniques for that in pranayama as well uh, but you can also slow the breathing down, hmm. completely slow it down. And you can also train yourself. We all have a natural resting heart rate and breath rate, breathing rate. And actually, you can train yourself to be so efficient using oxygen that your natural resting breath rate goes right down. <clears throat> and there's a reason why this is important. Because like yoga and pranayama, they were, they were developed by studying animals in nature. So... Hmm. If you observe um, animals in nature, okay, those animals that live a very long period of time, like elephants and uh, turtles, <clears throat> they basically breathe very, very slow breathing rates, like two to four breaths per minute. Wow. Animals that actually don't live a very long time, like rats and mice, mm -hmm. they breathe at like 20, 40 breaths per minute. And humans live around 70, 80 years, we actually have around 10 to 15 breaths per minute average, okay? But very, very healthy people have much slower breathing rates. Mm. And you'll notice people who are sick or they've got disease, they breathe much faster and they pant. <laughs> they breathe like that much more. Yeah, right. Yeah. Is it because they're not as efficient at managing oxygen in their bodies? Is that whereas like healthy yes. people are exercising more and they've taught their, they put their bodies in positions where there isn't as much oxygen or they're requiring more oxygen. So they just become more efficient at managing it. There you go. You got it. So that's actually the mechanism of, and probably the goal of what I figured out for pranayama hmm. is to make you super efficient at using oxygen. So you need to breathe less. This brings your breathing rate down to like the speed of like elephants and turtles. <clears throat> and what um, the reason for doing this is because there's so science now shows the problem of oxygen. And there's a doctor, a uh, scientist called Helmut C, he's a professor who coined the term oxidative stress. And he said, although, although it's very, very hard for humans to live without oxygen. You know, if you stop breathing for several minutes, you're going to die. It's also very hard for humans to live with oxygen. The reason why is because oxygen is corrosive, causes stress on the body. It's oxidizing. It burns things. It combusts. Mm -hmm. It creates fire. So we have like an inner fire going on all the time, which is mm -hmm. our, in our mitochondria producing light, fire, ATP mm -hmm. energy. All right. Mm -hmm. So... So oxygen actually makes us age. So the more efficient you are at using oxygen, the less you need to breathe, the right. less of the oxidative stress you get. And it also generally means that you are just healthier. Everything runs more efficiently as well. The less oxygen you need, the more adapted you are to having oxygen. Now, here's the other benefit of this. And it comes to this one technique in pranayama called kumbhaka. When you become very efficient using oxygen, you're fine that you can hold your breath for longer and longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. And another point of this is um, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is one of the most important gases in the body. We think that it's a waste gas, but it's actually one of the most important. The reason why is because carbon dioxide is essential to keep blood vessels dilated. And it works with another ingredient, nitric oxide, mm -hmm. which uh, is, is an antioxidant, has many different uses. It's a vasodilator, and it helps get oxygen to the places it needs to go more efficiently. So nitric oxide is super important. Now, when you slow breathing right down, you produce more carbon dioxide, you have more nitric oxide. If you breathe very fast, you blow all the carbon dioxide out. This is why it changes the pH, right? Mm. Uh, we, what makes us breathe again is carbon dioxide or as well. So it's what triggers our brain to breathe again. So actually, if you can have a very high tolerance of carbon dioxide, meaning you can handle more, your brain doesn't 
freak out, cause you yeah. to breathe again. This has two amazing effects. Firstly, it means you can um, you can handle more carbon dioxide. You slow your breathing down. You don't need to breathe as as often as well. But also, what it means is that um, you can hold your breath for increasing in long periods of time, right? And it means you can go into these very deep meditative states. Mm. When you hold your breath with no air in the lungs, it's literally like pressing pause on your life. Mm. Because life is just a series of inhales and exhales, right? Yeah. As soon as you hold your breath and you hold on, you exhale, you expire. You know, like what expire yeah. is another word for it is death. Die. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Die. But you, you switch off. It's like a defrag switch for your mind. So mm. holding your breath on the exhale... The longer you can do it, the deeper and deeper into these depths of meditation you can get into. All right, that wraps up our excerpt from Naraj Naik, and we will finish this off with our excerpt from Travis Steffens. Um, if you want to listen to Naraj's entire episode, that's episode 34, so pretty early in the podcast. It's called The Renegade Pharmacist and Soma Breath Founder Shares Path to Healing. And if you want to listen to the rest of Travis's episode that you're about to hear an excerpt from, that is episode 202. So here is Travis. Breath is life. It's the first thing we do when we enter the planet, and it's the last thing we do when we leave. And if you've ever watched a baby be born and it comes out and it takes its first gasp of breath you actually it's almost like you see the life enter this little physical form and then if you've ever sat by the bedside of somebody who's passing away they're always gasping for that breath it's a, and breath truly is the source of all life and the oxygen on this planet's 21.8 percent it's perfect balance it's not 21.9 21.7 it's 21.8 percent and so when something is that finite and that in tune and if you believe in consciousness at any level or god or the universe or whatever you want to call it our bodies are made of 99 to the 14th power of empty space and so if empty space being an oxygen molecule meets empty space that is in the form of matter that is talking to terra the Terra is observing Travis talking back to her. What's happening as we're breathing in this oxygen that's keeping us conscious and alive to have this interaction together? And what's in that molecule called O2 that is interacting with empty space and keeping this consciousness in this conversation alive? And so I have been on the self-development journey now for 16 years and finding and knowing thyself and oxygen has played a massive part in my transformation from not knowing myself to knowing myself and knowing what internally drives who I am. Mm. Mm. Well, that's a good answer. Yeah. And I, you know, I tell people often, most of my people know I'm a huge advocate of plant medicines done correctly. I know you've had experiences with plant medicines and then also obviously like breath work <laughs> is a huge part of your life. Um, and I tell people all the time, I'm like, just start with a holotropic breath work workshop yes. or some, you know, some playoff of that. Cause I'm like, honestly, like I would say it's equal, if not more powerful for me in terms of like emotional processing and seeing things that I wasn't seeing or having these really powerful somatic shifts in my body where I'm like, I just get it now, you know? And so, um, can you speak on some of the, you know, self-discovery, like it, it, for somebody who's never tried, you know, uh, like a, a more extended breath work journey, right? Like what would you say to them? You know, the, if they ask, what do you get out of that? Like, what is it like? What do you, what do you, what do you take away from it? What would you say? And I love that you said that you recommend holotropic breath work to them because plant medicine has become a bit of a fad and it's not something you should do because it's a fad. It's something you should do because you're called into it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to experience something that is, in my opinion, oftentimes more powerful than ayahuasca because if, if if i've seen many people go in that weren't ready for aya and they have no experience at all and they're um, scared we, and they're yeah. resisting and it was like horrible yeah that happens yeah, for sure the shaman's <laughs> up there shocking them and doing things to try to get them to absorb the eye and, and let go and it just 
Mm-hmm. It can or cannot be a beautiful journey, but mm-hmm. with breath work, you're going in and I don't care what it's like you're let go or be dragged kind of a thing, but you can stop at any time. And that's, what's cool yeah. right. is you can, you can go back to a normal breath at, and within seconds to minutes, you're back in stasis. Right. And so holotropic breath work or rebirthing, it's also called or psychedelic breath work allows you to, and I can get into the science of how it works if you want me to. Yes, please. Okay. We have those types of people. We have the conscious and the science. I mean, I'm like that. So I think I yeah. probably attract a lot of those kind of people. So yeah, for awesome. sure. Please. So in holotropic breath work, what's really interesting is that in your pineal gland, you carry a, a lot of dimethyltryptamine that's coded to your DNA. And in the base of your lungs, you have dimethyltryptamine that's coded to your DNA. And so when you access your own dimethyltryptamine that's coded to your own DNA, your spiritual journey is going to be wildly different than taking it from a root or 5-MeO-DMT or any of these other um, forms of dimethyltryptamine. And so dimethyltryptamine is designed to separate the soul from the body. So if Bob is driving down the road and gets into a head-on collision, every single near-death experience that I've ever read about, they're all the same in the fact that they have a they have a cataclysmic event and all of a sudden they're looking down at their body. And so a hundred thousand NDEs can't be wrong. Right. Mm. So the dimethyltryptamine that's in the body is designed to separate the soul from the physical structure. And in Aya or these other medicines, there's certain doses that cause that to happen at a larger level or, and you have a shaman there to keep you integrated with the physical form and things of that nature. But with breath, your dimethyltryptamine is accessed through breath and it's accessed through hyperventilating at such a level that it causes your your pH balance of your blood, your alkalinity to raise at such a high level that it starts to actually shut the body down. Now I'm going to stop for a second there and I'm going to go to the legend of Soma, who's I'm sure many of you have heard of Soma breath, Niraj Nayak. Niraj he was on the show. Oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Love Niraj. So um, he's on the app as well. Mm-hmm. And um, Niraj used the word Soma because of where its origin came from. And the origin and the legend of Soma is that the gods had an elixir and they would drink this elixir. And when they would drink this elixir, it would allow them to have altered states of consciousness. And they ran out of this elixir. And so one of the gods was charged to find something that would be equally as powerful as this elixir. And so he comes back to the other gods and says, I figured it out. I found it. And it's breath. I can reach that altered state of consciousness through breath that we had in the elixir. And so they all got together and they made a promise to humans and to the whatever you want to call it, the universal system that you can never take life through breath, the breath can only ever give life. So I'm going to go back to the body shutting down. So when you go through this hyperventilating process, your alkalinity is raising 70, 80, 90, 100 basis points over alkaline, which is 7.2. And when you increase the body that many basis points, pretty much with anything, it's going to have a cataclysmic event. So the body starts to shut down. And when the body starts to shut down and yet you're fully conscious, your pineal gland starts to leak dimethyltryptamine because it's having a a near-death experience, if you will. And then it starts to separate the soul from the body. And this is where the rebirthing can happen because when we can take the ego out of the body and the body can be on its own, we're designed to live forever. We're designed to be whole. Our birthright is wholeness. It's not dis-ease. Dis-ease is a whole other thing we can get into, but that birthright can be stepped into in an instant because it's all energy. So when we can remove and the disillusion of ego and all those things and have our dimethyltryptamine, not somebody else's, not some other plant, 
Mm. Our dimethyl tryptamine running through the body, which is the God molecule, we can experience massive transformation in a very short amount of time. All right, that wraps up our expert stack on breath work. If you have another topic like this that you'd like us to pull people together on that we've had multiple episodes about, or maybe one we haven't even done that topic yet, please let me know. You can DM me on Instagram or Facebook at Coach Tara Garrison. All right, thanks guys. Mm-hmm.